The petroleum sector in Nigeria is living up to its billing as a den of corruption. More cans of worms are about to be opened as the House of Representatives has launched an investigation to ascertain the actual amount of money being spent on fuel subsidy in the country. The lower legislative chamber is alarmed by claims by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Bamet, that the federal government will spend 6.7 trillion naira on subsidy in 2023. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Customs Service has questioned the claim by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC, that the country consumes 60 million litres of petrol daily. During a session with the House of Representatives Committee on Finance, the Controller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, said if the company puts daily consumption of petrol at 60 million litres, why does it allow 98 million litres to be lifted daily? Huge question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chris. <laughs> Very big question. And uh, some of us have been saying this for years, that the, uh, the figures being peddled by NNPC mm. uh, is not true. Uh, because if you, just as the uh, custom uh, CG said, if you say the daily consumption is about 60 million and 93, um, about uh, 98 million uh, is living uh, in depots daily. So what the essence, let us even assume that is 60, as you said. What of the assets? What happens? And you mentioned that that asset is about, um, about 38 million. We will need about 500 trucks to be able to leave that on a daily basis. Where were they lifting it from? Where were they taking them to? And that, then why, when you, you know, it's very, very funny the way we act in this country. When somebody come up and start brand, uh, branding figures around you, ask certain questions. <laughs> you say on a daily basis, for goodness sake, you and I know that we don't fill our cars on a daily basis. I, for instance, I know that on Sundays, I fill up my tank, and that will take me through the week. At least if I'm within Lagos, if I'm traveling, I cannot refill. That also happens to everybody. So I'm out of the equation, so I'm not buying daily again. <laughs> so same thing with my brother, and I'm sure it's the same thing with you, with everybody. So you, are you telling us that, so for those that are not buying, the only people that you know that buy fuel on a daily basis are those running interstate uh, services. Because if we are moving from here to Ibadan to any other part of the country, that is, so for you to be telling us that ah, this, is, this is the amount that we say, is, and secondly, the same figures were being branded during the COVID period. Mm. During COVID, for weeks, Nigerians were at home. We were not moving, no vehicle, no nothing. The same NMPs was still giving that same figure. Single. Then that means that something is wrong. So I am happy that it's even coming from a high quarter like the CG of uh, Custom. The, the other day, the GMD of uh, NMC was saying, oh, uh, all you theft, we are finding them in, 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 in churches, we were being siphoned, they are being siphoned at a mosque and the rest of them. But he has not come out to give us categorically the reasons why we are having this essence. Where are these essence going to? And I think it's the high time, and which is why most of them have said that our graft agencies are not doing what they are supposed to do. Sincerely, the graft agencies are not. Today, it was reported, although it has been denied by them, that EFCC went to um, officials which they've denied, um, had uh, some issues with a, a, a Nollywood actress, and she was beaten, and blah, blah, blah. And I continue to ask, is that the, is that the work of a, 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 EFCC? Why can't EFCC move into a sector like this? If EFCC move into the oil and gas sector, what we are talking now is not what we'll be talking about. But these guys are just doing whatever. They, this is an agency that have not, remit, that have not been remitting money to the federal coffers, coffers for years. They are just behaving the way they are. So let us see. But my problem is, despite all the probe or no probe, at the end of it, so you still realize that this will lead to nothing. Mm. There have been several probes in the past by the House of Representatives, by the Senate, and the likes. At the end of it, so my sister, let me ask you, where are the reports of those probes? Have they been implemented? That is the issue. All right, BKO, <laughs> truly, would this um, uh, committee or this investigation lead to nothing? Okay. Are you there, BKO? All right. Um, Mr. Chris just said that uh, this investigation will definitely lead to nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I do not think BKO can hear us. We'll fix that. But then, Mr. Adoye. Well, I think the National Assembly is empowered by Section 88 to probe uh, any suspicious. Uh, industry. Um, but unfortunately, this probe has become a leisure. 
it has become a festival since the year 2002, the year before the end of uh, President Lushego Obasanjo's regime. I remember as at that time, the National Assembly set up a committee, and they, they, somebody came from customs at that time, Deputy Controller General, I still remember the name, Julius Ndubuisi, and he said the Minister of Finance gave them order that they should not document import mm. of petroleum products in order to make sure that you know, they could come in easily. And he was you know, sending the signal that this was a very bad thing and that if we allow this to happen, it would lead to a lot of complications you know, for, for the oil industry. And don't forget that in 2012, the Presidential Committee on uh, Fuel Subsidy inducted, I think, about 21 firms. Mm -hmm. You know, corruption, all sorts of things, you know, they were inducted. And even now, just about two weeks ago, the same, this Outcore out Committee the House of Ass and the National Assembly is talking about 23 companies mm -hmm. that they cannot even but trace who owns them. Mm -hmm. So you could see that the, the oil industry is a can of worms. In 2012, if you see how big the report was, you know, a lot of recommendations made by the, you know, the National Assembly, how they were going to deal with corruption in the oil industry, what has happened to that report? There was even a time that a member of that ad hoc committee was inducted of collecting $600,000 mm -hmm. as bribe. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. So I think what they, what, what, what they are just saying is the kind of, uh, they are just trying to masturbate the ego of Nigerians to give the impression that something is being done. You know, committees have been set up since 2002, 2003, up till now. Nothing has happened. And then you are setting up another committee again. It's a waste of resources. If they cannot go back to the earlier reports, dust those reports up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the, 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 the fact is that our lawmakers have interpreted the crisis and contradictions within the oil industry. The point now is to do something decisive, mm -hmm. not just setting up another problem. We have enough reports to guide us on the step that we need to take in order to sanitize the oil industry. All right. Because, okay. Yeah. Now, where, where is this corruption coming from? Yeah. Um, from different sectors, mm -hmm. um, from the customs, Ministry of Finance, from NMPC, and name it. And uh, to be a bit fair to the National Assembly, also, um, it's part of the oversight function to do what they are doing. But don't also forget that they cannot implement and bring the people that we are indicted to book. It is the work of the executive. So if after the investigation, they pass on the report to the executive, we're supposed to um, get these people with it. That brings me back, he was talking about it. You've forgotten that we had a power probe some years back mm -hmm. that uh, Elumelu yeah. was the chairman. I remember what happened to that report. At a point, it became so controversial, and we didn't know. That was a report during the, I think, um, the good luck or, mm -hmm. or that. That report today have not seen this. The one of the editors, uh, you've forgotten the off the mic, off the mic that we had. Oh, minister off the mic, and people were fainting and mm -hmm. they're rising and fainting at the National Assembly. Where is the report today? So you can see why some of us, especially those of us in the media, feel that this is just what they're just doing is just um, moving around in, in, in visual circles at the end of it all. The government know what is happening. Those is, is our security agents know what is happening. The DSS, the civil defense, come to think of it as well. Civil defense is, is given the responsibility of manning our, uh, the pipelines. At least they have their primary responsibilities. Do you know the, what, how much Nigeria is losing on a daily basis on oil theft? Recently, we just had of a ship loaded with about 3 million or how many? Three millions of um, um, crude oil that was stolen from Nigeria that was intercepted at Equatorial mm. Guinea. From here, and somebody is telling us, uh, will, 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 will they take a, a ship or go to a church? That is, those are not what we're talking about. The government know what is being done. Now a contract is being given to someone like Tompolo to be able to man our pipeline. Even at that, some people are already kicking. Even within the Niger Delta, mm. already they are fighting themselves. Mm. Yes. I have somebody, some they, they, oh. He can man the ones within his own. This so one, that we did our own. Nothing, nothing. It is, we have to look at the problem holistic. And I will continue to say it. The box fall on the table of the chief executive of Nigeria. And who That's is it? That's the president. President. You cannot run your private company like this. If you run a company like the way you run in Nigeria, it will die. You don't just do that. The president should be able to call the security agents. Give me the names of those that you have. The security agents cannot tell us they don't know. After all, they are saying that they are going to name, name some people. 
The same thing within our security architecture. Some people were said the government came out through the minister of um, the security, uh, the SSG, um, the minister of information and rest of it, that they know those that we are financing uh, terrorism in Nigeria, and they are going to name them. How many of them have been named? Mm -hmm. UAE, uh, Dubai, about four or five, six, seven people were identified as financiers of terrorism in Nigeria. What did they do? Within two weeks, they got them, got them arrested, tried them, jailed them. Even the ones that we have arrested here for um, terrorism, Boko Haram and the rest of them, how many of them have been put to trial? So you could see that there are a lot of impunity, there are a lot of it, and this wasn't part of what the government promised us in 2015. One of the reasons why President Buhamba Dibuari was elected was because he told us that he will fight terrorism, mm. he will fight insecurity. Corruption. And we believe in why? Because he was a retired general. But what are we seeing? So the issue as it is presently is that why the House of Representatives can do all the probe and the rest of them, even those involved would be laughing because they don't know what will come out of it. Or to be able to hold some people accountable and use them as scapegoats. This will continue. All right, BKO, um, let's have your reaction. You know, I'm really impressed with um, the honesty of the Comptroller General of Customs. He's always been an incorruptible man, a very straightforward man. And we said what some of us have said repeatedly. He said it without mincing words. You will recall that on this program, we had complained about not just the subsidy bill, but the NMPC's claim that we consume up to 101 million liters a day. The Senate president, also said he could not believe that figure. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources also said he could not believe that figure. And they, these people, we have them on tape, we have them on record. We discussed this issue. But in our country, people simply don't like the truth and nothing serious has been done about this clear hemorrhaging of the resources of our country in the name of subsidy. The National Assembly shouldn't have allowed a situation in which the NMPC took it upon itself to determine how much it took from crude oil sales in the name of subsidy payment. Even when no money was appropriated for subsidy payment, because we were deceiving ourselves that we were not, that the subsidy regime had ended. Remember the former Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Kachiku, refused to call subsidy by its name. He was calling it under recovery and also other ridiculous uh, names. But subsidy was alive and well, and today is still alive. Now, we need to look at the pertinent, the pertinent questions that Colonel Amid Ali asked. And the NMPC needs to provide answers to that question. <laughs> he said, if by their own computation, <laughs> we were consuming 60 million liters a day, why were they releasing 98 million liters? <laughs> and then he asked the question, where does the remaining 38 million liters go? According to him, 38 million liters approximates to 500 trailers, 500 tankers. Which road do they pass through? How come they are not cited? So he refused to believe 
The story that we've been told over the years that this thing, the rest of uh, of the uh, petrol that they say we consume go into smoking. Colonel Amid Ali does not believe that it's possible to smuggle that much. 500 trucks, 500 tankers every day to smuggle it outside our country. He's not convinced that that can happen. And he's asking which roads are they passing through? And to smuggle 500 trucks every day. <laughs> that was why he said, NNPC cannot scientifically prove that we even consume 60 million liters a day, not to talk of the 98 million that we've been told over the years. So if the minister that supervises the ministry does not believe that figure, if the number three man in the country, the Senate president, does not believe that figure, why should I, an ordinary Nigerian, believe? Can they provide evidence of loading of these trucks? So it's like subsidy has been used to fleece our country over the years. And we have not stopped fleecing our country through the instrumentality of, of, of subsidy. At some point, an end has to be put to the nonsense that is going on. Because to set aside 6.7 trillion or so for subsidy is not what I imagine could ever happen. During the Jonathan years, Subsidy payment was not even up to, in a year, was not up to 500 billion naira. Now we've gone from less than 500 billion naira to 6.7 trillion. It's amazing. It's something that should bother every right-thinking Nigerian. Because we need money for infrastructure. Some of the money going into this bottomless pit called subsidy can actually be used to build critical infrastructure, can be used to develop our federal institutions, especially universities. So the universities do not even have um, third roads. They don't have. All right. Uh, um, with all of this um, in uh, unregulated internal corruption, how can we sanitize the oil sector? Well, I think the first thing is to get it right in terms of which institution, why the National Assembly has the right to, but we also know that members of the National Assembly are politically and economically exposed. So for me, I would suggest an independent judicial inquiry that will be made up of some credible Nigerians, where people will come and, you know, submit reports. You know, we have a lot of people you can, you know, retired judges, that Nigerians have some high level of confidence in them. Then also, it's also important that it's, right time for us to have a substantial minister of petroleum. For now, is the president that well, combines president. that function. Mm. I mean, he's, he's going to overburden him. Let, let him, you know, shift this responsibility to another person. Whether we are going to update Silver mm. from state, uh, minister of state of petroleum to substantial mm. minister, so that somebody will be held responsible for what is going on. But I can tell you that uh, petroleum industry, until we begin to refine industries at home, I mean, uh, petroleum at home, you know, until we ensure that, you know, uh, there is greater stakeholding of oil producing communities in the management and control of petroleum. This industry is going to become a kind of, um, the, the, you know, a kind of, a, a kind of room for people to just, you know, uh, pile up money, public money into their private pockets. Nothing will change unless there is political way on the part of those in power. I don't see that now. He mentioned the FCC, right? The FCC will even be better than the National Assembly, their own opinion, mm. because they are a little bit independent from the political a class, bit, yeah. even though they are not totally immune mm. from political manipulation. Mm. So let's have a situation where the FCC, for instance, can go into your industry, and let us wait for, maybe we are going to have a different report. But when you have the National Assembly since 2002, probing, 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 there's, you know, there's no hope that the outcome of this current probe will be different from what we have had in the past. All right, Mr. Chris. Yes, um, unfortunately, we thought that 
uh, by the passage of the PIA, that the problem within the oil sector will be solved. Then from what we are seeing, it's like it's, we're back to what we're used to. And um, as you rightly said, and I will also um, align with that, is we need to do the needful. And what are the needful? Until we start producing our petroleum in Nigeria, we'll have this issue. Until we stop depending on importation, there are some people benefiting from uh, this importation. And that is why they don't want the refineries, refineries to work. Do you know how much is being popped into the Nigerian um, refineries, the one in Wari, the one in Port Harcourt, and the one in Kaduna, on a yearly basis, for turnaround maintenance? And not a single drop of oil, petrol, has been refined mm. in any of these this things. And that's what I'm talking about ESCC. You continue pumping millions and millions of dollars for turnaround maintenance. Mm. And nothing is, being, nothing is being done. So until we, continue, we do the right footing, this government, when coming in 2015, promised that they're going to set up refineries, new refineries. Till now, you just have barely about eight months to go. There is none. So it is a very big problem. We have a big elephant in the house. And it's like we don't have anything to do about it. But my own personal opinion is that this so-called uh, subsidy or no subsidy is fraud. It's fraudulent. And remember in 2014, before the election, the president himself said there's nothing like subsidy. Mm. He said it at Chatham House in London when he was being interviewed. He said anybody that can prove that subsidy in Nigeria should come and prove it to him. Now, he has back subsidy. And from like J.D. Riley said, from about 500 billion to about six point, how many trillion now? Seven trillion. They are in deep trouble. In a situation where we are borrowing to service our budget. We are borrowing to service our most of the debts, we are not even servicing the debt. What we are even servicing now are the interest on the debt. And it's keep on piling on a daily basis. And I continue to ask, do we have an economic team in this government? Do we have an economic team in this government that can take out of the bus? We know there are, pro we know there are problems over, mm. over, everywhere. We know the problem in Ukraine. We know the problem in between Russia and Ukraine and the rest of them that um, have been able to put a kind of span in the works. But that's not withstanding. Countries are, making, are, going, are moving ahead. Why can't Nigeria do the same? All right, Bikhil, let me have your final take on, on this issue. I think that there is a massive, massive corruption going on in the oil industry. Even when we are told that we are losing hundred thousand barrels daily to oil thieves. We've seen the chief of Nova staff come out to say he does he disagrees. All kinds of looting are going on. And the worst that we can do to ourselves is to take foreign loan to pay for subsidy that we are not even convinced that it is not just an opportunity for some people to line their pockets, become rich at the expense of the rest of us. So the daily consumption figure of NMPC needs to be investigated. Even the DPR, that is in charge of monitoring the filling stations in our country, does not agree with the figure, with the consumption level that the NMPC claims that that is what we consume every day. DPR, their own figures are different. The Minister of State does not believe. The Senate President does not believe. So isn't it time for us to set up a proper probe to determine how much we consume on a given day, rather than somebody just imagining that we are, we are consuming 60 million liters a day and then proceeds to allocate 98 million liters. How can you say that, yes, the consumption 
rate is 68, uh, 60 million. And then you went ahead to allocate 98 to who? The remainder, where is it going? It's just not, it, it, it leaves so much to be desired. It, it raises fundamental questions. And that's why you've seen that from the day Hamid Ali made his submission, there has not been any concrete uh, uh, response to him. At least somebody should have stood up now to shut Hamid Ali up with facts. But the facts are clearly not there. What is the rate of purchase of vehicles in our country at a time when there was even greater prosperity? When Nigeria was listed among the three fastest growing economies in the world, we did not consume this level of petrol. Are we now being told that more people are buying cars now in a season of, of, uh, of uh, uh, economic depreciation than when we had prosperity when things were a lot better economic-wise, economy-wise. And we saying, is that what the licensing office, where new vehicles are registered, is that what we are hearing from there? Are those ones saying that we, do not, we are now buying more vehicles to the point that someone can say rate of consumption is greater now than 2015? I mean, there are questions to answer. There are questions to answer. But there are people in our country who believe that no, nobody can touch them, that they believe that they are not accountable to anyone. So I won't be surprised if at the end of the day, nothing happens. Subsidy is a massive scam in our country. And on, 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 on the day this scam comes to an end, I'm going to throw a party. Thank you very much, Bikyo. <laughs> <laughs>